Hello and welcome to Kim Knight's The Kiwi Health Detective Podcast. Today we've got a special treat for you. Kim was recently interviewed by Alan Meisner on the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast Show and he is allowing us to rebroadcast it here for you. So here is Alan Meisner interviewing Kim Knight, the Kiwi Health Detective. Being over 40 can make getting healthy and fit so much harder. The 40 Plus Fitness Podcast was created just for you. Five days per week, we will encourage, educate, and entertain. Your host, Alan Meisner, is a certified personal trainer who focuses on individuals over 40. He's dedicated to helping you to be successful on your health and fitness journey. We're glad you're here, and we have one request. We want you moving for the duration of this podcast episode, whether it is walking, running, lifting weights, or even just doing housework keep moving it's only 15 minutes you can do it let's get started good stuff hello today we have kim knight aka the kiwi health detective is a health and personal transformation coach living in Auckland, new zealand kim shows people how to identify and resolve the absolute root cause of seemingly inexplicable chronic physical pain or fatigue without medication or supplements. She also specializes in stress and anxiety reduction and emotional mastery. She is trained in a number of cutting-edge mind-body therapies, including Mickle therapy, motivational medicine, the emotion code, in-bit multiple brain integration, advanced clearing energetics, and Qigong. 99% of her work with clients is carried out remotely via phone, online webinars, and online self-help programs. Unable to work for over 10 years, her own recovery from CFS, anxiety, and clinical depression led her to try over 160 different therapies on her journey back to health. Her professional training and client experience is extensive. Combined with her first-hand experience of having to get herself well gives her the ideal offering for her clients. Her work earned her a nomination for finalist for Next New Zealand Woman of the Year, 2011. The contact details for Kim are located at the show notes, older.fitness forward slash 33. That's episode 33. Welcome, Kim. Hello. Welcome, Alan. How are you doing? Very good, thank you. All right. Well, New Zealand is, is kind of far away from where I am right now in Louisiana. So what's it like there? What, what, what's, uh, what's new in your world? Well, we're coming into summer now. Of course, we have opposite uh, seasons to you. So I'm very looking forward to that. And Auckland, the best time in Auckland is over the summer period because the country just sort of closes down for about six weeks and there's no traffic in Auckland. So it's great. (laughs) Probably not so good for a tourist, but... (laughs) (laughs) Well, it still is good because they deal with all the traffic. I guess, yeah, I guess you can get around. But if no one's, no one's, I mean, the restaurants and everything are open, right? Oh, yeah, everything's open. People people aren't really working. People take their summer holiday and their Christmas holiday together here. Oh, okay, yeah, absolutely. Okay, the reason I brought Kim on is whenever I start working with a client, I want to be very careful to know that the client is truly committed to what we're trying to do and that they understand the emotional toll that changing your life can be. And we've, we've met with other folks to kind of talk about those concepts. And a client I was recently working with on this podcast has had some issues that we went through. So I wanted to kind of take that step back before we really kind of get into the program and say, okay, you know, for you to do this, for you to really want to change your life, you've got to have some mental fortitude and you've got to have some self-love. You've got to want to do this for yourself. If you're doing this for someone else, I'm, I'm not certain most folks would be successful. You really kind of have to want this for yourself. It has to be life-changing, and it has to have that, that, that much of a, a commitment to it. So, um, Kim, I'm sure you've dealt with folks with, with that kind of struggle. Um, well, I've dealt with a lot, lot of people, and, and I include myself in that. So, you know, as far as fitness is concerned, it's I love sport. You know, when I was a kid, I just loved doing sport, uh, and yet it was quite hard for me sometimes to, to get into it because – you know, what I've discovered more recently is that the, you have these limiting beliefs, you know, that are deep in the unconscious that are actually unconsciously limiting us from being really happy or healthy. And, of course, this is all set up in childhood at a very young, early age, so we don't know it's been set up, but I call them limiting beliefs. And so it's, it's really important, that, you, know, you know, to identify these beliefs so that they don't sabotage us. 
Okay, what are what are some of the common beliefs that uh, that you run across that would cause someone some problems? I think the most common one is I'm not worthy. I'm unworthy. And that could apply to anything, you know, I'm not I'm I'm unworthy of feeling happy, of having success, of being abundant, of having my ideal partner, of having my ideal career, whatever it is. It's like I'm unworthy, I'm not good enough. That is the core one. And mainly I'm working with, with people and mainly women actually who uh, that, that some, somewhere along the line, and usually this, or this happened very on, early on in life, they were disempowered and they became disempowered as a human being. And then they've been living their life with this unconscious disempowerment. So really what we need to do is we need to re-empower ourselves. And, you know, we, we are designed to be happy and healthy and, that, and joyful and that is our natural state. But if we have all these limiting beliefs running in the subconscious, then it doesn't matter how much we say, you know, at a conscious level, okay, I want to be slim, I want this, I want that. If the limiting belief is still sitting in the unconscious, then it, it will just stop us at, at every turn. Okay. I guess I, I, I can kind of relate to the, the not worthy, uh, you know, not my, I mean, not from personal experience, but in conversations that I've had with my clients and with others, um, are there any other limiting beliefs that are fairly common? I mean, that, that sort of seems to sit underneath all of them. Um, also, I'm not lovable. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not lovable and I'm not worthy of being loved or receiving love. That is a big one as well um, because the core need for a human being is to be loved unconditionally, which means to be loved without conditions. And what happens is usually in our early childhood is that we don't experience that and so we create a belief around, well, I'm not lovable and I'm not good enough and therefore I don't deserve, which is another one that, that ties in. And, and so we, we just will prevent ourselves from being happy. And, you know, I've been doing Qigong for 15 years now and I've had to use so much discipline to, to do the practices sometimes, even though I really, really enjoy the practices when, they, when I do them and I really started to look at, well, why have I got so much resistance to doing something that I actually enjoy doing when I'm doing it? And it's really, really good for me. And it has so many health benefits, and yet I resist doing it. And what I really discovered was that it made me feel good. When, when I, you know, if you walk or you do your exercise or your qigong or whatever it is, you feel good. And so unconsciously, there was a part of me that was actually afraid of feeling good and feeling happy and that all goes back to the de deservability of you know deserving to feel good deserving to feel happy and joyful okay so um, if, if someone is, is kind of going through these struggles of you know yes they enjoy walking they enjoy feeling good but they're not doing it how, how would they recognize how would someone recognize that they weren't working with a trainer obviously they don't show up the trainer knows something's wrong but if, if they how would how would someone generally recognize this recognize the pattern or recognize the belief I guess I guess it well it would start with a pattern because they would start trying to do something like get fit or go walking or do an exercise or or the qigong uh, and then I guess they would stop and they would yeah. probably wonder why they stopped yes I mean the pattern is what it is it's like if I if I you know have all these good intentions on a Monday that every day I'm gonna go for a walk every day and I do the first day and then I get to the second day and then what will happen is the mind because it's the mind that comes in the way with lots of stories so the mind will come in and come up with a million very plausible excuses of why I can't go for a walk today <laughs> yeah. you know which is just rubbish, really, because actually we, we could spend, say we were going to spend 20 minutes going for a walk, we could easily spend 20 minutes doing something else. Uh, so it's about recognizing the mind stories that come up in the head. And, and on the one hand, it's, it's good to work and dig and have a look at, okay, well, why? Why is this pattern running? And obviously that takes work. But on another level, it does require self-discipline and willpower sometimes to push ourselves through into that practice you know whatever it is and interestingly enough in qigong for example we have a thing that is called a gong and a gong is a hundred day period of practicing a technique and when you go through a gong you you change you know there's massive transformation that goes on inside because of what has to to take place, if, if it makes sense, to actually get through all the resistance. Okay, yeah, that does. I mean, I, that, 
what you what you've done is you you've taken on a practice you you've perfected it if you're going to be doing it over a hundred days I would assume you get pretty good at it and you you've habitualized it I mean now it's 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 a part of you it's you're, you're used to doing it it's, yeah and that's part of it is that you know yes we have these neural pathways of these old excuses coming up and so we literally have to re recreate or create or recreate new neural pathways of the new habit. And as they say, it takes something like a month to change a habit, but three months to really embed a new habit. Okay. So if we're someone that's that's tried to get fit, say we're going to walk every day and then we do it one day, maybe two, and then we stop, and that's been a pattern that we've had in the past, we, we may actually be suffering from some emotional roadblocks. Yeah, there'll be something in the psyche. If, if, the, if our conscious mind is saying one thing, but we're not doing it, then the unconscious mind has to be saying something else. So that is where the limitation sits. Okay. And, and usually it does tie in. So what's happening at a mind mental level is very closely allied to what's happening at an emotional level. And, you know, when you asked before, okay, well, what's at the bottom of it? And I said, well, unworthiness or, you know, undeservability or not, not, not able to receive love. Uh, really, there's a fear at the bottom of a lot of that. There's some form of fear of either I'm going to be rejected or I'm not lovable or whatever, but it does also come down to some sort of unconscious fear. Okay. So, again, if, if someone's starting to notice that they've had these patterns in the past, then that's time for them to actually start really focusing internally on, on what some of their, their beliefs might be and, and to figure out if some of those are the limiting beliefs that are affecting them? Yes, and also I would say is to, not just to do that, but to really become conscious of the fact that it is about self-love. It is about self-respect because when we do good things for ourselves like eat well or exercise, we are loving and caring and nurturing and respecting ourselves. And that has been greatly missing, especially for women, is that we tend to put ourselves, you know, last. Uh, and, and I find this all the time when we're working with people. And so we put these things like doing exercise or eating well on the bottom of the list, whereas actually it should be at the top of the list. Absolutely. <laughs> we can only help others to the extent that we look after ourselves. So we can start to bring in, you know, maybe maybe reframe it in terms of, okay, this is about me loving myself and, and taking care of myself. And, and I guess, you know, depending on how deep these feelings are, this might not be something that someone can handle on their own. Yeah, I, I would say essentially in, in general, we, we all need help. You know, we've all got our blind spots, we've all got our unconscious stuff and... It, we're going to need help in one way or another, whether that's getting, you know, listening to some podcast or, you know, and getting a light bulb moment or, you know, going and seeing somebody. We all need help and guidance in one way or another. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. We're about to run on time, but, uh, you know, you're, you, you know, go through your, your bio, you're, you're doing a lot. Uh, <laughs> So if someone wanted to follow up with what you're doing, what you're working on, and uh, wanted to get in touch with you, uh, how would they go about doing that? Well, the best, the easiest way is um, potentially the, the website, and then there are other links from there. So um, my website is thekiwihealthdetective.com, okay. and, and then there will be links there to, you know, I have lots of videos on YouTube. I do have a podcast, which actually I've been a bit slack in recently because I've been too busy to keep up with it. And Facebook is a good place, basically, to, to anything that I announce, any announcements will, you know, and, and also, you know, tips will be on Facebook. So that's Kim Knight Art of Health is where I am on Facebook. Okay. And I'll make sure to put all of that information in the show notes. You can go to the website and, and find the show notes for this. And uh, with that, you'll be able to, uh, to get to all those links. All right, Kim, uh, anything else you want to leave us with as, as we say goodbye? Well, the only other thing I wanted to offer is that I do have a free video series, um, which is an introduction to Mickle Therapy, which is an amazing technique for, A, if you have exhaustion or fatigue or inexplicable pain, but also Mickle Therapy is equally useful for if you, uh, for example, have difficulty putting yourself first or uh, communicating how you honestly feel or if people are treating you badly and you don't know how to deal with it. 
So Mickle Therapy embraces all of that. So that's an offering that I give to people because I don't have time to do that one-on-one -on -one anymore. So I have a video series for that now. Okay. And they can also get to that through your website, KiwiHealthDetective.com. Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you, Kim. I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Alan. All right. With that, we'll say goodbye. This concludes this episode of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast. We hope you took something great from today's show. If you know someone who would enjoy this podcast, we would really appreciate if you would share this with them. Keep moving and striving to improve your health and fitness. We'll talk to you next time.